Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Alright, so I was on Twitter. Shocking, I know. But <laughs> I came across this post here by Mr. Docs. Um, and I just thought this was such a unique fishing technique that I haven't seen before that I was like, you know what? Let's just record a quick video on it. Um, and you know, I'll share some of my thoughts on the idea. But definitely go go check out his Twitter page. I'll have a link to it down in the description. And, and go read this blog post. So what we're talking about is a browser in the browser attack. I don't know if he coined that or if that's like already been a thing, but this is the first time that I've heard about it. And the blog post, it's not that crazy long. So feel free to just go and read through it. Um, but essentially what we're doing is we're gonna have a little pop-up window inside of our phishing site. And that pop-up window is going to have an embedded site within it. So it's like we're phishing, <laughs> we're, we're putting a phishing site in a phishing site. Yo, dog, I heard you like fishing sites, but all right, let's, let, let's try to explain this a little bit better. Let's go back, okay? What about when you go to Cernit sites? He uses Canva as an example here. Let's go to Canva real quick. And if you look at canva.com, you know, this is just used to create various graphics, but if you hit log in, you have options. You, you don't have to sign up or continue with like an actual email account, username, password that you set up you can instead connect with another service like Google, Facebook, or Apple. If I click on this, we get a little pop-up window. And the pop-up window just seems to be embedding, you know, Apple ID.apple.com. Um, and it's the sign-in prompt here for Apple. And we could, you know, inspect, look at what network calls are actually being made when we type stuff in. And we see, looks like we're interacting with some JavaScript or something. And you hover over this and okay it's going out to cdn-apple.com and again we're looking at apple.com here i'm gonna assume this is the legitimate apple service that we're interacting with but what if it wasn't and that's where the attack comes in what if we lit we said we're interacting with apple.com but the actual page that you see here was a phishing site that would be so freaking cool all right, and that's what this blog post is about. So I'm gonna go ahead and just play around with this and uh, let's see what we can do. All right, let's go. All right, so let's just dive right in. Now, I'm not gonna show you guys how to actually go about setting up a phishing website. That's that's a bit outside of scope of the, the point of this video. If you guys are interested in seeing how to use something like GoFish to actually spin up phishing campaigns, let me know down in the comments. Just let me know what you think about that. I imagine most of the people on my channel, they're security professionals. They already kind of understand the concepts or have used GoFish in the past. This is just an open source phishing framework that I'm using for proof of demonstration here. We're not actually attacking anything and I'm not gonna show you how you can go in and use this in malicious ways. All right, so I've already got a phishing page set up. This is what it looks like. This is very fake. Um, at the top, you know, it's just pointing to gofish.local and it looks like a login prompt for Google. And if I were to type something in and notice it says this connection is not secure, that's because I'm not using HTTPS here at the top. I'm just using default port 80 over HTTP. If I was gonna go and do a real red team operation, I would be actually using HTTPS. I wouldn't want that type of pop-up to show up, but this is proof of concept stuff. We're not actually doing anything malicious here, so I'm not actually worried about whether or not that pop-up displays. Anyway, I'm just gonna say, I don't know, example text. And again, we'll do example password as the password. I'll hit sign in. And just so you guys understand kind of the idea behind the phishing attack, once they sign in, they get redirected here to your email address has been verified, just a generic message, okay? Um, this is the example of my landing page that I'm using. And if we go back to go fish and we refresh, we see we actually have someone who submitted data. And if I expand the results of this, we can see the values that were entered here. So this is how the fish works kind of in a traditional phishing campaign. Now where this gets really cool is at the bottom of Mr. Doc's blog post, he here has some templates over on his GitHub. And this, this is where the magic happens. All right, so in here, we've got all kinds of templates that we can download. I'm just gonna go ahead and download them all as a zip file. 
and then once that's downloaded let's say go to I want to go to my downloads folder and then we'll just extract these guys and inside of this we've got exactly what we just saw on that github repo now in my case I'm just gonna simulate using Windows Chrome in light mode because I feel like and this could be a wrong feeling but that's probably what majority of people use now he mentions if you're actually going to be using this again as part of like a phishing campaign or a red team operation you should probably see and and use like the user agent try to check out like the user agent to determine you know what it is that the actual person on the other side of that phishing attack is using and then you can display the appropriate template based on the value of the user agent we're not going to worry about all that because i just want to kind of show proof of concept here so let's just take a look at what this index.htmi file looks like. And we can see this is, you know, basically a placeholder. That's a placeholder. That's a placeholder. And then it says, hey, we can't find this crazy path that you're looking for. So let's go and edit this file. I will say edit with notepad. And we've got all kinds of stuff in here, but the things that matter, let's see if I can make this bigger. The things that matter are the description here. We've got XXX, XX title domain name, path, and then phishing link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just placing the phishing link that I had just created. So we'll come back and grab. That's not the page. We want this page. We're going to put that as my source for the phishing link. And then for the domain name, we are pretending to be Google. When you go back to that phishing page, this looks like Google. So let's go ahead and do domain of HTTPS google.com and I may even just do login.google.com. Now I don't know what the actual login page for Google is, I'd have to go look that up, but in this case this is good enough. Domain path, this can say whatever we want. I mean I could say like login.html, um, we'll leave it as that and you can see what that part is once we actually show the page up. And then the logo description here, I'm just going to say something like please log in to your account. If we save this, we close it out and now we open it back up, you can see the differences that we made, all right? We've got this that appears to be login.google.com slash login.html. Obviously, we're at our phishing website and at the top it says, please log into your account. Now notice this symbol is not correct. And he actually talks about having to go in and replace that symbol, I think, with, I think it's this file that you need to go and replace. But you know what? This is good enough. You guys kind of understand the concept here. This is where it's super cool because this is my phishing site. And then this is embedding what appears to be google.com, but it's, it's not. If I were to type in credentials here, I'll say example two, example two with a typo, whatever, hit sign in. Look at that, we get redirected just like we had before. It still looks like login.google.com. And if we go back to our Go Fish panel and hit the refresh button, boom, example two, example with a typo. <laughs> but this is the whole core concept of the attack is if you go out and you host this index.html file up on say a phishing server, uh, in fact, I don't know if this will work right because I'm just copying the one file. Actually, it won't, I'd have to copy all of the contents here inside that directory, all of these. Okay, so Harley from the future here, I decided, you know what, I will go ahead and upload it up and so you guys can kind of see. So I've got two domains that we're dealing with. We've got obviously the phishing site, right? This is the phishing domain. And so I would go out if I was on a real operation, I'd go out and purchase a legitimate enough looking domain name and I would use that instead of gofish.local. But if this was you know, a legitimate enough looking and, and of course using SSL, this would be what I send out to people during my vishing or my phishing or whatever social engineering technique we're using. And when they get here, they see this pop-up and the pop-up says login.google.com and it looks like the legitimate site. And so this is where I think this could be really unique and obviously we can take this further and have it be like, you know, instead of just the pop-up showing up right away, there could be a button they have to press that says log in with Google and then this pops up. We could get super creative and I guess that was the whole point of wanting to make this video is I wanted to just help Mr. Docs kind of spread this technique, raise awareness that this is something that's out there 
um, because it's just one that I hadn't thought about before. And it really does get you thinking because one of our mitigation strategies that we talk about as professionals is teaching users to look at the URL. And in this case, this wouldn't have helped them if the URL they're looking at is this one, you know? And I think it's important for us to understand and teach people that just looking here at this URL isn't enough. That's gonna give you a false sense of security because the actual site that you're on is here and that site is what controls the content that you're seeing. So anyway, that's it. I hope you guys enjoy this one. If this is a new technique for you as well, let me know what you thought down in the comments. Also, if you wanna see more content kinda of like this or if you've got cool things that you wanna share and get my thoughts on, I, I, I love to learn, <laughs> so please share them away. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.